good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Santa Rosa Week. I'm Deborah Nelson. And I'm Jerry Cooey, and we're here on beautiful Channel 27 Mediacom every Saturday afternoon from 4.30 to 5. And we're now on YouTube also. We're on YouTube. Uh, our channel is called Santa Rosa Week, all one word. Just type it in, and uh, this way uh, the whole planet will be able to watch our show. We're global. We're, we're global now. Um, I've already had uh, viewers from Scotland. Uh, one from way out in the Gulf of Mexico, hundred, about a hundred or so miles, and uh, had a guy, uh, uh, one of our employees, uh, assistant principal uh, for Milton High School. He said, "Hey, I watched your show." Outstanding. I said, "Well, that's, so that's good." So, uh, Deborah, uh, what's going to be our main topic this week? Well, public-private government run amok is our subject for this week. You, you'd not, you, please don't tell me we've had another problem with public private entities, have we? Well, of course, at the national level, we're all having a problem with public private entities like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Yes, we are. But we're also having our own little local problems with this particular form of hybrid, hybrid government. And, it, of course, you and I made a, a field trip <laughs> last week. We, we went on location. <laughs> yeah. We, we 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 had a lot of fun, you know. We've, uh, you know, we've kind of got rid of two of our problems in Santa Rosa County, so we decided to spread our wings a little bit. And uh, I th I think, uh, Deborah, I think everybody knows that uh, First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, are very important to me. And any place that's within driving distance, uh, if I think uh, the citizens are being abused, I'm I'm on my way. So, in this particular instance, it was Pensacola. And, of course, we're called Santa Rosa Week, but we do cover Escambia County and right. Pensacola as well. Yeah, it was uh, a remarkable thing. Um, uh, this, it, this, the specific problem is the Maritime. Maritime Park, Park Board. Uh, I know you've, you've all probably read about it in the paper. You know, they've actually been in operation for about two years now. And um, the, a concern was brought forward that they never have allowed public input at their meeting. Correct. And this is, of course, the board that's overseeing construction of the, the Maritime Park, which is a, was a $40 million, now it's a $47 million project. That's well, the, the, the one guy said $40 million plus $27 million, so it may be $67 million by now. Who most, knows? Most of which will come from the public. Public, public taxpayers. And, and, you know, and I think our viewers know that we've made several shows concerning public-private and our feelings about that, that if it's on if a private entity with their own money they can do whatever they want to but when you spend in public money that's where the problem arises well and that's the issue that that was raised with right. this board this week and i think um i think really to set this off uh tell our viewers about the first clip that they're going to see well this this is the clip that, that got the, the ball rolling on this whole issue uh judge lacey collier is the chair of the maritime park board and uh, he appeared before the Pensacola City Council recently to update them on, on how that uh, process was going. And during that meeting, uh, uh, City Councilman and, uh, and uh, Deputy Mayor John Geralds asked him about public input during these, these park meetings. And uh, this is what uh, Judge Collier had to say. Roll tape. Quite frankly, I'm not sure that we are a board like you are that uh, that, that that fits into the to the norm. We are making uh, perhaps technical decisions, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know what people have to say about it, uh, or what they could offer us to to uh, to assist. Uh, quite frankly, I'm not sure that I care what some other citizen thinks whether it should be land capital or Trinity, mm -hmm. uh, because that's just their opinion, and I'm the one that's got to. To to that that. Well, you know, that's very interesting, Judge Collier. I, I'm not sure I care what the public thinks. I make the decision. I make the decision. You know, I have... With somebody else's money. Yeah, with somebody else's money. I have listened to a few people on the sidelines of this, and you know what was reported to me that when he was still an active judge, he could run his courtroom that way. He, he didn't have to listen to people that were sitting in the, in the, out, out in the seats watching the trial. Right. What the judge needs to understand is it's not his courtroom anymore. 
It's the taxpayer's room. It's the taxpayer's money. It's the taxpayer's authority. authority. It has been given to him with the hopes that him, along with his board, will handle it in a proper manner. Uh, I am shocked by those comments. And uh, just, you know, actually, when we was at the city council meeting, the word arrogance came up often there. And I think that's the best way to describe it. Well, and it's interesting that a judge doesn't doesn't understand how sunshine law. I mean, this is a basic sunshine law principle. Yeah. Well, and and, and one thing at, at the city council meeting, a uh, former judge, uh, we had one individual that stood up and said, "Of the two people on the planet, I would expect that you, Judge Lacey Collier, and you, Mayor John Fogg, should know what the law is." Yet you don't exercise the law. It wasn't being exercised. Right. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, our, our next clip is with uh, one of the city well, council. We, we've got some city council reaction right. to, to uh, Judge Collier's comments and also just in general comments on the, on the question of whether there, there need to be question sessions during these meet, public question sessions. Exactly. So, let's, uh, let's roll that clip. For the CMP, a board will be a standing board forever, as long as there is a maritime park there. And that park is a public park. And at some point in time, the citizens will need to be able, if they have a concern in reference to the operation and maintenance or whatever of that park, they need to have an avenue where if they want to go and sit uh, there and wait until they finish their regular business, but have a place for an open forum. And, and I don't think that, that the, the board feel like that they have to do that. And I think that there is some type of guidance that need to be given. I mean, it's not like this board is going to be dissolved at the end when the park is gone. This board is going to be here and it's going to represent, manage, and operate the park. And I feel that at a certain point and them doing business, that they need to have an open forum so that citizens can be able to state whatever their concerns are. So that was Councilwoman Jewel Canada Wynn, and her point was that this board is, is not a it's it's not a temporary thing. As long as it, if indeed this park comes to fruition, they're going to be overseeing it forever. Right. I, you, you know, and and that's that's one of the things that struck me. She said something that I hadn't really thought about. You know, everybody's kind of been focusing in on can we do this park or can we not? But the oversight through infinity will be handled by this board. Right. And, and I think she made a very good point uh, by saying that. I mean, at the present time, they are the board that oversees it. And unless there's some something that happens Potentially violating the Sunshine Law might change that, but mm -hmm. at the present time, they are the board that oversees it. So I thought that was a very good uh, point. So, and what we're going to do is we're just going to show you a series of clips. So uh, the next clip is... Uh, this is uh, Deputy Mayor John Geralds, and we've also got some comments from uh, Councilman Marty Donovan. Okay, so roll the clip. We have uh, a process by which... We are preparing to spend $40 million of the taxpayer, taxpayer's money, and then we have the audacity to say that they can't participate in the discussion. That's ludicrous. And I'm going to go right to the heart of the matter. I think we as a, I move that we as a council direct the CMP board to add open forum to a regular part of their meetings. We need to open the forum so that when individuals have concerns and interests, they need to be able to get those questions answered by the people who are moving forward with the plan. We cannot deny them that inalienable right. They need to be able to participate, and that's all there is to it. Thank you. 